stay tuned for Eric Energetics. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of the Diana 48. I've actually had this rifle for a uh, few years now that I think about it. And uh, I started thinking to myself, you know, we, we've done brake barrels under levers, but we have not done the side cocking levers. These. So, we're going to do, we're going to get deep into this one. But before we get started here, do me a favor, if you hadn't already, hit that little subscribe button down in the corner. It's absolutely free, doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps out the channel. Also, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. It's where we feature these t-shirts. I got a new line of hats on their way. They should be within the next couple of weeks. We'll have those set up. And then, don't forget my Generation 2 bipods. We've got those out. Alright, let's get back to our Diana 48 here. This is a German-made rifle, um, completely German-made. It's a spring piston, as opposed to you have gas pistons and spring piston. This is a side lever cocking effort. So rather than breaking the barrel or cocking it uh, underneath, you cock it on the side. Let me flip this around so you guys can see the lever here. The lever just tucks away nice right here up on the side. This is a Diana, so it features, this one's featuring their T06 trigger, which is an amazing trigger. It really is. It's a great trigger. Completely adjustable. This also comes with open sights. This is uh, set up for uh, elevation as well as your right and left vertical uh, settings. In addition to that, the actual post can be adjusted on this. It can be moved up and down. So this one is in a beechwood stock, but this is a special stock. This is actually it is beechwood, but it's finished in this black. Um, it's almost like a satin black. It's pretty amazing, but it's actually a real wood stock and then a satin black finish. So it's actually pretty rare. It's kind of a limited edition. The gun itself weighs about eight and a half pounds. It's got a 17-inch barrel, and the cocking effort on it. Just so I don't miss this, it's right around 40 pounds. They claim 39. I say it's right, right around 40 pounds. The overall gun's 42 inches. It's quite the interesting package, and it's been around for a while. As far as the bipod setup on this, I basically set this up with... Uh, it's one of your typical swivel mounts. You'd find these in a standard swivel mount. So if, if you had a swivel mount on your rifle and then you wanted to attach a bipod to it, this is a standard. The only difference I did, I got a little longer front mounting screw and put a washer on it and then just screwed it up. So you um, screwed it up against the stock here. So this doesn't alter your stock in any way. You can take this off, put your standard bolt back in and take this off because this is a padded Picatinny rail and it works as you see it works great it works good for displaying the gun in this process but those are an easy way to put bipods on this because with the side lever we can't put our side mount of bipods on this one anyway they claim this shoots uh, up in the upper 800 feet per second but this is a very special gun and I'll tell you why so I've had it for a couple years Actually, probably about three or four years now that I think about it. And uh, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to any type of spring pistons is if you get a twang. Now, this never really had a twang, but this is fully tuned and has the Vortex Progressive Guide Tuning Kit in it. And I'm going to show you what that is here. Okay, what this does, th actually there's four dampening guides in this process. And you have a, you see, you have a top hat here. We've got our spring, and now they're making these in steels. This is a Generation Two that I put in here, and it was a nylon or, or a plastic um, tube that contains the spring here. Tom, the owner of the company Vortec, the guy's an absolute genius. Where a twang comes from, I don't know if you guys know this, but when the rifle is cocked, that spring is completely compressed. Okay, and springs when they're compressed you know this they have a tendency to bend a little bit so if there's a little bit of bend in the spring and then let's say it's cocked and it's locked into the sear and then the trigger is pulled and the sear is released that spring goes flying open and if there's a little bend in it it'll it'll go back to its straight position and there's usually a little twang or a vibration what Tom came up with he came up with the idea 
of this progressive guide. And they're making them out of steel now. And what that does is when this spring compresses all the way, it compresses down inside this tube and it has nowhere to bend. So it keeps it completely straight, makes your overall shooting experience much smoother, and you don't have that annoying spring sound. The spring sound is gone. So this is patented, and this is called a, a Vortec. This is a Vortec PG. This is actually the PG-3 steel kit is what they came out. They had a PG-2, and that was what is installed in this rifle is a PG-2. But absolutely amazing. Anyway, in the kit, you get the, you get the spring, the top hat, the steel guide, obviously. He gives you a piston seal and lubrication for the entire process. And they call this a drop-in. It's pretty simple to install. And I might do a future video and show you how easy it is to install these. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, yeah, Tom, I'd say uh, he's quite the genius inventing this because I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I purchased at least a half a dozen of these over the last couple of years. And I've got them anywhere from my, in my Beeman R9 to my HWs. I even did the video on the Ruger Magnum, and you saw that how that performed. And go back and check that out. That has one of these Vortex kits installed in it, so it, it actually changes the whole dynamics of the gun. It's pretty awesome. So um, these Diana 48s, they're pretty awesome. They retail anywhere between about 460 and 600 dollars. The problem is, is you can't find them right now. They're back ordered everywhere. But anyway, we're going to take you out and show you how well the rifle performs. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. So stay tuned for the next day. All right, so we're going to test our Diana 48 over the chronograph, see how well it does. We're just going to use, I like to gauge a lot of rifles just in these basic pellets. These are just our uh, Crossman Premier hollow points, our 14.3 ring. So I'll shoot five shots over the chrono with this. And then I'm going to come back and tell you how well it performed with a few other pellets. So I have a few other pellets and I'll give you the uh, velocity on those along with the foot pounds of energy. So let's. Uh, do our five shots and uh, see how well this performs. Okay. All right, shot number one. 840. Being left-handed, right-handed rifle, so I do the best I can. If you notice, I kind of keep my arm in between here there is a, a bear trap here to keep it from coming forward, but you never can tell. That's why I still put my arm in front of it. All right, shot number two. 831. That one dropped a bit. I haven't shot this rifle in a little while. Honestly, it's probably been sitting for about a year and a half. All right, shot number three. 825. That's funny. That one dropped too. And let's see. Shot number four, 826, and shot number five, 838. All right, sometimes it depends how these, these cheaper pellets fit in the breech. Some are a little looser, some are a little tighter, so your velocity can vary on that. But let me tell you how well it did on some of our other pellets here. So our field target trophies, which are 14.66 uh, grain, that shot uh, averaged at 840 feet per second, so pretty much close to what the Crossmans are doing here. And uh, we averaged about 23 foot-pounds of energy. So the Barracuda 18s, which is kind of like quite well, those are 18.13 grain. They're a newer pellet that uh, H&N came out with. But we averaged um, 21.75 um, foot-pounds of energy, and we had 735 feet per second was our average. And then the Meisterkuglins, we tried those. These are RWS. They're basically a 14 grain, 878 feet per second, and 24 foot-pounds of energy. So not too shabby out of any of those. But let's uh, we'll show you. What's the best performing pellets? This rifle isn't overly pellet picky, but stay tuned for the next segment. Let's put our Diana 48 through a little accuracy test. What we're going to do today, ironically, I was going to shoot these Barracuda 18s, but this thing shot really well. And, and again, I'm going to remind you, this is not overly pellet picky. You can pretty much shoot anything in this, and you're going to get really good groups. But um, when I sat back here, I started thinking about, what about the Hornets? I forgot to test the Hornets in it, and actually, they do pretty well. So we're going to shoot the Hornets today. 
Before we get going though, I want to thank Splatterburst for supplying us with these. We're using the 4 inch targets today. Sometimes it looks different and deceiving when I blow it up on the screen, but they're just the little 4 inch targets. So anyway, I'll leave a link for those. But let's go ahead and shoot five shots and uh, see how well we do. We're a usual uh, 20 yards back. Go ahead and take a quick look at that. All right, let's see how well we group. That's three. <laughs> That's four. And, and five. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty decent group. Um, a little human error maybe in there, but uh, good group, very accurate gun. Let's uh, move on to the next segment. Let's test the trigger in our Diana 48. These T06 triggers are absolutely amazing. They're one of the finer triggers. So let's see. I don't even know what I have this one set up at. It just took me a while to dial it in, but it's uh, perfect for me. So let's see what we're at. All right. Got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. Take the safety off. One pound, nine ounces, so it's under two pounds. Got it set for one pound, nine ounces. Yeah, these triggers are great and uh, fully adjustable for everything, let me tell you. But uh, anyway, they are a pleasure to shoot. Let's move on to the next segment. All right, we're gonna do a little plinking here with our 48. Well, you're gonna use the H&N Hornets again, just because we shoot, shot those uh, on our accuracy test and they did quite well. Um, just to let you guys know, this is just a cheap scope I threw on here for this review because I had this stored without a scope on it through a little bullseye rail on there um, so if I can get any type of uh, accuracy from this distance with this cheap scope just imagine what a good scope will do and then don't forget if you're someone that likes to shoot open sights this gun comes with open sights too which is actually really good so anyway go ahead and take a look we're usual 40 yards back got some steel targets up there a couple eggs a little pipe a little pig Let's see if we can knock those out. All right. Might as well start with a little egg. All right, that's one. And two. See if we can knock out that pipe. Yep. And let's take out that little pig.
Oh, yeah. Anyway, I like it when we don't miss. Anyway, this is quite the rifle, that's for sure. So let's move on to the next segment and wrap this up. Well, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. What can we say? The Diana 48 is an amazing rifle. It really is. German built makes it even better when you put one of these Vortex kits in them because these things are amazing. I, I can't tell you enough about these as far as how awesome they are because, like I said, I have about six rifles that I've purchased these for and installed these and it just makes all the difference in the world. It quiets the rifle down. I told you my biggest pet peeve is that twang. I cannot stand that twang. And uh, any rifle that has that twang, I do whatever I can to get rid of it. And this is the number one way. Not to mention, it just this just smooths out the overall performance of the rifle. I can't say enough good things about it. Tom, you're a genius on these. But anyway, I'll leave a link below for you to if you want to check these out. They're actually they run anywhere between 80 and 90 bucks for the whole kit. That's the seal, the spring, the lube, everything you need to tune your rifle. And you basically just drop it in. It's a process. And I, I'm going to try to maybe in the future I'll put together a video and show you how to do this because it's not that difficult. Let's talk about the negatives on this rifle. There are none. Let's be realistic. This is a German made rifle. Is it expensive? Yeah. You're going to pay, and right now you can't even get a hold of these. But you're going to pay anywhere from the high fours to six hundred dollars for something like this that's even if you can get a hold of it but good quality air rifles they're gonna cost you some money and this is one of those you could pass down from generation to generation I mean the finish on it is amazing I really like this black stock which you can't even get anymore which is pretty cool anyway how did our rifle perform pretty amazing it actually did and not to mention this to 6 trigger I love these to 6 triggers you can tune them any way you want length of pull weight the whole bit you dial them in for you personally and they, they just they're terrific anyway performance again how did we do I think we got under one third of an inch on our group at 20 yards which is fantastic and that was what just I threw that um, that scope mount and that cheap scope on there just because I had it sitting around I threw it on there real quick to see how this would perform and it didn't disappoint, but I can only imagine if you put a really nice scope on this thing, how well this gun would do. It's not overly pellet picky. In fact, uh, power-wise, how do we do? They claim that the uh, rifle shoots in the upper 800s. That's exactly what it did. In fact, uh, when I tested it with the uh, Meister Kugans, I think they were right under 880. So we're looking, you know, you're looking anywhere between 21 and 24 foot-pounds of energy. 21 to 24 foot-pounds of energy depending on which pellet you're using so but it's not pellet picky which is great so you can use the cheap Crossman Premiers in it if you want you can use the hot little Hornets that we did those would be just incredible hunting pellets because they they perform quite well the Barracuda 18s did well too they also did though and they're they're a newer pellet that's just out so you're gonna pay for quality without a doubt you're gonna pay for quality and this my friends is quality so rating Five stars, totally earned it, five stars, without a doubt. Now I'm wrapping up a few things. I had these home projects going on. I had the uh, kitchen, which I just finished up, and then actually what I just immediately finished up is my master bath. I'll show you a few pictures of it, just so you guys know what I've been doing behind the scenes, but let me show you a few different pictures of these. So, yep, that was all the work I was doing and it definitely was time consuming but it's definitely worth it but here's the best part now I'm gonna have a little bit more time that I can dedicate more towards my air gun detectives and I got a couple ideas and a couple pretty cool things that are um, one's gonna come out this summer you'll find out in the next episode we'll uh, we'll discuss that but I look forward to doing some other stuff other than home projects you guys know how those go Ooh. anyway when one thing breaks you fix it and there's something else that breaks. There's something else that needs to be done. They're non-stop, never ending. You guys know what I'm talking about. So with that, I want to wish you all a very happy 4th of July. I hope you take some time with your family. You guys enjoy each other, enjoy each other's company, maybe a little barbecuing, enjoy the summer weather. But uh, and, and remember, this is celebration of Independence Day. And that's one thing we're never going to give up is our independence. You know that. So don't forget. This is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, take care. God bless.